our next speaker is the co-founder and CEO at BestMyer. BestMyer offers an ecosystem to manage autonomous vehicle fleets, a fleet management software, a smartphone application, a system for traveler information, and solutions for the control of smart infrastructure. He holds a master in civil engineering with specializing in the field of transportation and a minor in management technology and entrepreneurship from EPFL. He's passionate about innovation and is legitimately a digital leader by heart. We are delighted to have Mr. Rafael Gindrad with us. Thank you. So, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here in order to present you Best Mile. So, Best Mile is a Swiss company, a spin off of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. And we are developing a cloud platform in order to manage fleets of self driving vehicles. So, self driving vehicles are no more science fiction today. Some companies are already building, selling, and deploying everyday fully automated vehicles, like the small bus of Local Motors, you can see here. And in a really small period of time, other car OEMs, but also tech companies, will be able to do the same. But before speaking about such vehicles, uh, let's come back a little bit in the past. If you look at New York, something like one century ago, you see that at that time, the main transportation system was to walk or to use uh, horses. But you can already see the first car uh, in the center of New York. Only 13 years later, you can see only cars and one horse. So even in mobility, changes, changes can appear pretty fast, and, and we can be surprised. But since this picture, something like one century ago, the system is always the same. We are just building more and more cars. Cars still have four wheels, an engine, and today the system is a little bit broken. This is, an, let's say, an extreme example. Uh, of uh, an highway near uh, Los Angeles. But you can see that today in the main cities around the world, mobility is no more working. We are losing too much time in traffic, a lot of people are killed, and we are generating also a lot of pollution. So the goal of self-driving vehicles is really to provide a new solution, more sustainable and more efficient. Self-driving vehicles can come from a lot of different types of vehicles. It could be small shuttle or small buses, like the one already deployed today. For sure, it could be cars, like an example of Mercedes. But we can also imagine other applications for trucks, agriculture, mining, delivery, or logistics. It's really the beginning, but it's going to, be, to move fast, faster and faster every month. And this is really the time where big car OEMs have to decide how they want to target uh, this, uh, this new market. But even if vehicles are really smart and can drive by themselves from A to B, it's not enough. Because a vehicle, for sure, will be able to provide you a lot of safety by having a lot of sensors, a lot of computation. For sure, the vehicle will give you back free time because you don't have to drive anymore. But if you want to go a step further, by having on-demand transportation, by sharing vehicles between customers, by increasing the total efficiency of a city, for example, in order to reduce traffic, you need, for sure, really smart vehicles on one side, but you need also a technology allowing you to manage such vehicle in a smart way. And this is really what we are providing at BestMile. So at BestMile, we are really not developing vehicles. We are not developing any line of software that goes inside the vehicle. We are working with several partners that are already doing it. But at best mile, we are providing something like a control tower. And I think it's a pretty good example. Planes are, are really smart. Planes have autopilot, but still, it's not enough. If you want to operate an airport on an entire network of airports, you need smart planes, but you need also a control tower, making sure the entire system will work like expected. And this is what we are providing at BestMile. So we are providing a cloud platform that enables several vehicles to work together as one fleet and as one transportation system. You can see different pieces of this cloud platform on this slide. So for sure, we have a big backend taking care of managing the fleet, optimizing the fleet in real time. 
And on top of this backend, we can provide also a marketplace uh, where you can find several interfaces, web interfaces or smartphone application for the fleet operator, but also for the traveler, so you and me. How does that work? So, you know, vehicles are connected in real time to this platform. We are receiving a lot of data, like position, speed, level of battery, because such vehicles are usually electric vehicles. We know also the traffic in the city, and by having all this information in real time, we are able to optimize the system. And by optimizing the system, I mean dealing with real-time routing, automated dispatching, so it's really deciding in real time which vehicle has to do what. Because vehicles are electric, we also have to decide when each vehicle in the fleet can be used and when this vehicle has to be back uh, to the garage to charge itself. And for sure, in order to do this, we have to collect and process a lot of data. We have to do machine learning in order to do continuous optimization. So it's all about sending the right mission to the right vehicle at the right time. Vehicles are driving themselves, but at best mile, we are deciding which vehicle has to do what in a given fleet. Today, it's already, so this technology is already used every day uh, by the first customers. Today, we are working with small buses or small shuttles like this one. Um, all these vehicles are deployed on two kinds of places. On one side, private sites, like an airport, an industrial site, a campus, an hotel, a, a resort. So places pretty small and also places where you do not have a lot of regulation. So on a private site, you can easily deploy fully automated vehicle already today. But as you will be able to see in, uh, in a few minutes, we already have also already today uh, real fleets uh, on daily operation on in inside city center, so public road. As an example, a project we had um, more or less two years ago in 2015. It was a pretty big European project, and one part of this project took place in Lausanne, in Switzerland. And at that time, we had the occasion to use our own technology in order to manage a fleet of six uh, self-driving vehicles during six months. At the end of the project, we were also able to deliver the world's first on-demand transportation system using self-driving vehicles. So we had a fleet of six vehicles from a French company, EasyMile and Ligier. Ligier and EasyMile were providing the vehicle, the self-driving software, and at best mile, we were providing uh, the system to manage and optimize the fleet. The goal was pretty simple. This is our campus in Lausanne, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. And the goal of this fleet was to create a line between the north and the south part of the campus. And we had something like six stations in the middle. So it was really like a small scale public transportation system, but completely automatized. And then today we are already working with real customers for commercial project. One example, it's a center of a Swiss city called Sion, the south part of the country. And Postbus, one of the biggest transit agencies in the country, is using every day our technology in order to manage a small fleet of fully automated vehicles. The fleet is really small, uh, but in reality, it's always starting like this. It's, it's a risk for a company like Postbus to buy vehicles like this. And so the first fleets are always really small. You start by buying two, four, maybe six vehicles. You test them a few months, and then if it's working as expected, you can scale the system in the same city or elsewhere. So it's a two-year-long project as a first step. It's a pretty unique project because it's really on daily operation, open to the public, and also using public road. And at Best Mile, we are really providing the entire ecosystem, so for sure, the back end, optimizing the system, we are providing, let's say, the control tower, so interfaces allowing Postbus to manage the system. And we are also providing several interfaces for the traveler, like an interactive kiosk like this one. We are also providing a web portal and the smartphone application for the traveler. Another example, it's a nuclear power plant of EDF in France. EDF is using six uh, fully automated vehicles in order to move employees inside the site. Uh, it's a pretty big site. It's something like two kilometers long, more than 1,000 employees. And by, for the same cost, we are replacing one conventional vehicle 
driving every half an hour by six uh, self-driving vehicles, electric, and so with a much higher frequency. But for sure, the second step is always to apply the same technology for a bigger market, so really the market of autonomous cars, because the needs are really the same. So even if vehicles are smart, again, it's not enough. You will need a system like this. And a system like this, it's really important to have an agnostic system. So in the same fleet, in the same city, uh, being able to manage different kinds of vehicles together in the same system. And again, we can come back to the example of airports. You have Boeing and Airbus providing planes, and you have other companies providing the control tower. And one control tower is has to work with Boeing and Airbus at the same time. And it has to be the same with a fleet management technology like this. So over the last 10 to 12 months, we have been contacted by pretty much every car who I am in the world. And today we have a lot of discussions with them about, let's say, three kind of uh, main use cases. The first one and the easiest one is to manage piloted parking system. So in a really small period of time, uh, you will be able to buy a car uh, and at the entrance of a big parking, like an airport, you will be able to jump out of your car and the car will park by itself. But if you want to do it efficiently, it's more easy to have a system telling to each car where to go and the system will have to manage also the traffic inside the parking. And again, it has to be agnostic because airports are not going to build a parking for Audi and a second one uh, for Mercedes, for example. The second step is to manage also car sharing systems. So like today, you will be able to rent a car, drive it manually, but between customers or during the night, such vehicles will be able to move by themselves. So it's, it's a smart way to have a repositioning system in your city. Um, every morning, the car will be positioned uh, to the right location. And for sure, the last goal is to have big fleet of fully automated taxi, like a Uber fleet or any kind of system. And today, a lot of OEMs are for sure targeting uh, this kind of application. So for the cities, um, at the end of the day, there is a lot of benefits because by using self-driving vehicles, we will be able to provide uh, easy to use transportation system for people, for example, with a wheelchair, uh, which cannot use today easily a taxi or a public transportation system. By using self-driving vehicles, you can have tailored vehicles for this kind of population, and it could be a door-to-door -door solution. For sure, it will be also a way to reduce a lot pollution. Uh, vehicles will be electric, vehicles will be shared, so the total number of vehicles in a city will decrease a lot. Today, in a big city like London, one third of the traffic is what we call cruising, so it's just vehicles looking for a parking spot. And as soon as you share the vehicles, you can for sure kill this, uh, this part of the traffic. Again, reducing of traffic, as I was explaining, and at the end of the day, for sure, the goal is to reduce infrastructures. Uh, today, our cities, at least in Europe, uh, all cities were never built to have cars. It was historic cities, historic centers of the city, and we tried to, to add cars uh, inside the city center. In some cases, it was working pretty good. In other cases, it is just not working. And so the goal for sure will be to you to reduce uh, how much infrastructure and how many roads we need in order to, to manage a smart transportation system. So for me, my last question, and for you, how do you think autonomous vehicles are going to change your life? Thank you.